Hey guys, and welcome back to That LP Show. The name of the game is Earthbound for the Super NES. You may notice some inconsistencies with my stats or the way my items are rearranged since yesterday's episode. That's because I uh, did a test recording earlier today for this episode, and I forgot to make a restore point for uh, when I ended my last episode. So I had to redo the last part of the Dungeon Man sequence in order to get back here. But other than that, I redid everything pretty much the same way that I did yesterday, and I have everything that I had left over. I have the Casey Bat, of course, because I beat Master Barf, and I still have uh, five Magic Truffles, uh, four from what I've already collected here, including the one that I already got in Tucson. So, right here... No, wait, wait. Where is it? I'm pretty sure it's somewhere around here. You know what? It's not around here. It's over here. Here we go. I know there's one more Magic Truffle around here. I'm pretty sure there's one more magic truffle around here. Okay, Pooh still has the piggy nose. Little further up and left, excellent, okay. There we go. All right, this is the fifth and final magic truffle here in deep darkness, and that makes six of them. And we're going to have to use these things sparingly because they are so rare. We'll probably be using them uh, towards the end of the game because at that point we're not gonna have to worry about conserving our uh, psychic points. All right, so here we are. We've made it all the way through Deep Darkness, and from uh, what somebody told us in Scaraba, there's a tribe of people here called the Tendas. Oh, this must be them. I guess you are. All right, so they're all going to say the same thing. The Tendas here are suffering from a severe case of shyness. They don't want to talk to anybody. So we're going to go digging through their trash because what are they going to say? Absolutely nothing because they are way too shy. And in it, we have a death ray. Can I give that to Jeff? Does he have enough room? There we go. That's a more powerful weapon for Jeff. So we're going to give that to him. What? What, what did I just do? Give it to Jeff. Thank you. And that increases his, well, 12. Not bad. Increases his offense by 12. All right. So, over here. Okay. Well, he's not shy. He's, uh, he's up for, he's, uh, forward enough to let us know that we can stay here for free if we want to. I think I'll go ahead and do that. And I'm going to assume that these guys are aliens, similar to the Mr. Saturns. And they seem to have a similar uh, decor around here. They have a, they have another little hot spring right there if you have any status effects that you want to get rid of. There is one Tenda who is not shy, and it's this guy right here. There's only one Tenda who's not shy. It's me, Bubby. Who says Bubby? You know what? There's something scary that comes from the underground, so we covered up the hole. There's lots of dinosaurs down there. What? I went there once, but I came right back because I was so surprised. I'd be pretty surprised, too, to see underground dinosaurs. There was a talking stone that talks a lot. Okay, now it's getting a little weird. Are you sure you weren't just smoking something? Do you want to go and see? I understand, but I'm not as strong as I look. I'm sorry. I guess I can't help you. The guy next to me is strong, but he lacks conversation skills. He needs to overcome his shyness first. Well, a little bit of Jack Daniels should help with that. Helps me overcome shyness. In fact, it straight up gives me an overabundance of courage bordering on stupidity. Alright, so, only way we're going to access the next area if we over if we uh, help these guys overcome their shyness. So, uh, so that strong one can lift a rock. And this guy looks important because he's got must he's got a goatee and some horns. Wow, actually, that that's not a very good design. He kind of looks like the devil. We're all shy. Rumor, I heard a book to fix shyness. There is. They all talk like Yoda. Where? Don't know. Just a rumor. Okay, so apparently there's a book that can help them do that. We have no idea where it is. Looks like there's nothing much we can do right now, so we might as well leave. And insert more Deus Ex Machina. Let me guess, it's Apple Kid. Hello, it's been a while since we talked. This is Apple Kid. We're having beautiful weather here. In winters? Eh, I guess some people like cold weather. 
I am now at Dr. Ananuts' lab in Winters. The doctor doesn't seem to be around right now. But I'm just working on my eraser eraser machine. Okay, remember that thing we ran into in Stonehenge? Well, that music can't be good. Hey! Oh no! What are you doing to me? Who are you? Well, that sounds bad. Who's calling now? Ness, I haven't talked with you in ages. This is Orange Kid. How did you get this number? We're finally coming near the end of our research on how to change a boiled egg and back into a raw egg. I don't care. By the way, Apple Kid is missing. He left here saying that he was going to see Dr. Andonuts in Winters, and he never came back. I was hoping to borrow the book of Overcoming Shyness from him, Deus Ex Machina. But suddenly, he disappeared. I haven't read the book, so I'm not very good at talking. Sorry. I'm also working hard on my invention, so I hope you'll understand. Say hello to your friends for me. Die in a fire. Okay. Apple Kid. Sounds like he's in some pretty deep doo-doo right now, so uh, we're going to head on to Winters and see if we can help him out with that. Hey, Bubble Monkey's wife. It's me again, that chewing gum monkey's wife. My husband left me here to go play with Tessie along the shores of Lake Tess. Wow, that's irresponsible. Jeff, long time no see. You've gotten taller. Oh, I don't have time to chat right now. Tony's missing. I thought he was with you. He suddenly disappeared. He usually He's usually very responsible and leaves a note at least. Okay, first Apple Kid, now Tony. Lots of people disappearing around Winters right now. Let's go into the shop. And right back out. The only thing I did there is sold off some of my excess items that I didn't need. And that's including the piggy nose. I also went ahead and I deposited all of my money into the ATM because we have some tough enemies here. Which we can easily one-shot if we sneak up on. Okay, let's see if we can actually get into a battle here so I can show something off. Nope, that was a lesser mook, just like the one we ran into in Dungeon Man. Ah, here's a new enemy, the Wooly Shambler. Uh, pretty generic enemy. I think he can do PSI Magnet on you. We can take him out with regular attacks. No threat at all. He is weak against fire if you want to use that. Alright, so as you can see, we have some uh, newer enemies around here, some alien type enemies. We're going to be running into a lot of them from this point forward. And this is one of the reasons that I didn't, uh, that I advised you not to, uh, not to teleport out of Winters after landing the Skyrunner here before going after Rainy Circle, because then we would have ended up in this area and we would have had to deal with them far before we were ready. And there's, there's another enemy around here. I'll probably run into it in a little bit. It's the Tessie Watchers Club. What do they have to say? Sebastian, Chum was kidnapped. Oh, wow. Okay, Apple Kid. It's so shocking. He was such a great guy. Tony and now Sebastian. Looks like we have a, a epidemic of disappearing people going on around here. That doesn't sound good. I finally saw Tessie. It's like seeing a UFO. It emerged from the lake and flew towards Stonehenge. Flew? I don't think what you saw was Tessie. It kidnapped one of my friends along the way. Okay, definitely not Tessie. Tessie's friendly. Where are you, my friend? They came and took you away. Come back, Sebastian. Hey, that's a haiku poem. Is it? Really? Let's see. Where are you, my friend? They came and took you away. Come back, Sebastian. Ha! <laughs> Clever. I wonder if it was a haiku in the original Japanese version. I mean, if they managed to actually translate it from Japanese to, uh, to English and still keep it within the rules of a haiku, that's pretty impressive. Okay, let's talk to Bubble Monkey here. Yep, I have some chewing gum. You ever think that Tessie is kind of an early roughed draft of Dory from Super Mario 64? I mean, it, it's just like a purple dinosaur with an elongated neck. I mean, it's not wearing goggles, but Dory didn't wear goggles until the DS remake of S Super Mario 64, so I, I guess it could be. Anyway, we have to ride Tessie across Lake Tess. I'm going to speed this up.
Bye, Tessie. That's the last time we're going to see her. Or him. They never really specify. Anyway. If we were to come here a little earlier... Oh, wait. Is this a new enemy? No more lesser mooks, and damn it, it diamondized poo. So yeah, that's what your character models look like when they're diamondized. They're just... They're, they're made of diamond, and they got a diamond for a head. Anyway... Luckily, we have things that can cure that. Uh, believe it or not, the couple life noodles can actually cure it, and we'll also go ahead and use the secret herb, uh, because, well, it it's not an item that can revive the dead, at least not all the time. But, you know, we can use it to heal diamondization 100% of the time. Anyway, that's just like being dead, which means that Pooh did not gain any experience from that battle. So, well, that sucks. Is this a new enemy? It is! It's a whirling robo, and it's just like the, uh, it's just like the spinning robos that we ran into in Peaceful Rest Valley. A little bit stronger. It can give you a cold. I think it can drain psychic points. I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, oddly enough, it's weak against fire. If you have a rust promoter, it is a robot, so you can go ahead and use that. Uh, other than that, we can take it out with regular attacks. Easy enough. He didn't even get a chance to do anything. All right, so this pencil statue used to be here. If we hadn't backtracked through the cave uh, near Rainy Circle, then we would have needed the pencil eraser in order to get there. And to be honest, I'm not 100% sure how we do that. Yeah, you know what? If we didn't have the pencil eraser, we would have to teleport out of here and uh, find a place with a phone. And then we'd have to go all the way through Northern Winters again in order to uh, ride Tessie across Lake Tess and come back here. So make sure you have the pencil eraser if you don't, you know, if you're coming here and you haven't taken care of the pencil or and you haven't taken care of the pencil statue. Other than that, we don't have to worry about it because I took the time to backtrack through this cave right here in order to do that. So we didn't have to go through Brick Road's old dungeon. So I'm going through the cave. And popping out the other end because there is nothing new to see in there. However, go on, on the way through, Pooh reached level 46 and learned Life Up Gamma. So now we have two reasonably effective healers. You want a piece of me? Yeah, we have two really good healers in our party now. Which is good because most RPGs only give you one. And it's usually a girl. Both of our healers are guys. Pretty tough ones too. I mean... Our main character is both our primary damage dealer, our heavy tank, and one of our primary healers. So that really breaks RPG conventions. Hey, look, it's Jerry. How you doing, Jerry? Remember when I met him in Tusum, I named him Jerry because he doesn't have a name? I've been waiting for you. My master Apple Kid completed his eraser eraser machine. While I was calling you, he was kidnapped. He felt like this. How do you pronounce that? I don't feel like hunting down a sound clip of the Metal Gear Solid exclamation point thing, so you're not going to hear it. I was there, but I was helpless. Sorry about that. Anyway, take this machine. It took me long enough to find PK Starstorm for you. Anyway, we can buy some stuff from him if we want to. We still can't sell anything. Uh, yeah, we could probably use this instant revitalizing device. But we're still hungry. Alright, nothing much to do here. We're going to take our new eraser eraser machine, and we're going to head into Stonehenge. Alright, and here is what I believe is the only Eraser statue in the entire game, which means this is the only time we are ever going to need this thing. However, I am going to hold on to it just for a bit of humorous dialogue later on in the game. And is this a new enemy right here? 
Yes, it is. It is a Mook Senior, a uh, very powerful version of the less, uh, of, you know, just more powerful version of the lesser Mook. Uh, it can also diamondize you, so we need to be really careful with that. It is weak against PSI Fire, so we are going all out in order to take this thing down as fast as we can. Heavy Bazooka, and we'll just use regular attacks with Ness and Pooh. If you run into two of them, I highly suggest using uh, PSI Rockin or Star Storm on top of PSI Fire, which they're weak against. And we got a pulsating purple hallway here, definitely of alien design. Reminds me similar of the design that uh, of the uh, tunnel that was underneath Threed, which was also probably designed by aliens since those zombies were working for Gygus. And we have a new enemy right here, which looks very similar to an old enemy. This is the Star Man, uh, pretty much the the primary foot soldier of Gygus' army. Uh, has some decent psychic attacks. It can put up shields in order to protect itself. Other than that, no particular weakness, and you can take it out fairly easily with reg with uh, normal attacks. Attacks. And Ness leveled up. Does he learn anything? No, he doesn't learn anything. Typical kid. All right, we have two paths to take here. They're, uh, they both go to the same place, but I want to go and take the path over here to the right because it's here that we'll be able to have access to a present later on. And that was a surprise attack from two lesser mooks. And I had to run away because they were making mincemeat out of me. Okay, cup of life noodles for Jeff. Cup of life noodles for Pooh. Where is it? I know I have more. There we go. Damn. Okay, do we have any good healing items so I'm not wasting uh, psychic points? Nope. Okay. Oh, God, that sucks so bad. You know what? I don't want to use the brain food lunch. Not right now. Not right now. Screw it. Let's do life up on them. Well, Paula needs it because they're at full health. Alright, I want to go through this path because it brings us closer to a present box that we can get in the next room. And in here we get spicy jerky. Alright, this is pretty much the only path that we can take right here. God, these lesser mooks are everywhere. No, I'm not going to let you surprise me. Oh, did I surprise you? Did I surprise you? Oh, I hope you are a senior mook. That'll give me satisfaction to know that you were a senior mook and I just whacked you. Okay, two paths that we can take here. But first, we have a new enemy. This is the Atomic Power Robot. It can replenish its fuel supply and uh, fill its HP to max. But it explodes when you kill it, so I want to save it for last. We're going to concentrate on the Mook Senior for right now. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and use the uh, Heavy Bazooka, just to be sure. Oh, maybe we won't need it. Okay, if we don't kill this thing in one hit, yeah, it'll replenish its full supply. Or its f fuel supply, not full supply. Anyway, let's use regular attacks, and let's show off Jeff's new ability, the mirror ability. Take a deep, deep breath, and he turned into a, the atomic power robot. At this point, we have no control over Poo. He's going to behave just like this thing, which includes replenishing our fuel supplies if we ran on fuel, uh, and, uh, you know refilling people's HP to max. So we have that right there. That's a good little trick uh, in which you can do after you save these guys for last. There you go. And you just max out Jeff. We're doing pretty good. So uh, at that point, you can just do auto fight and uh, let the rest of the team do their thing. There we go. And then he explodes. And when you're uh, when you're mirroring enemies, keep in mind that if the enemy has a PSI attack that Jeff also has, I mean, the, not Jeff, Jeff doesn't have any PSI, that Pooh also has, actually any PSI attack, if it's an actual PSI attack that your characters can use, then it will drain Pooh's psychic points for uh, however amount that it costs to use that as a regular character. So just keep that in mind. It's not going to give them a freebie on PSI attacks. And we got a Guts Capsule from there. We're going to go ahead and give that to Ness. 
And that's pretty much it. the only thing that we needed to get at the end of that winding pathway. So now what we have to do is go down. And we have a conveniently placed magic butterfly. Come on, use it. Paula definitely needs that because she's been using a lot of psychic points to cast PSI Fire on the senior mooks. And we're going to run into quite a few more before, before moving on to the next area. So we're going to need those psychic points. Just a quick note, the senior mooks do cast PSI Freeze, so it's probably a good idea to have the Rain Pendant on Paula. I do, so I don't have to worry about it, but, you know, just in case you don't, it's a good thing to remember. Just thought I'd mention it because I noticed that uh, they didn't do much damage to Paula thanks to that. Oh, come on. Oh yeah, the Starmen can use Sudden Guts pills. It's just as useless for them as it is for us. And from that battle, Paula learned P uh, learned uh, Defense Down Omega, which pretty much does exactly what it sounds. Just like Defense Down Alpha, it lowers an enemy's defense, except Omega targets the entire enemy party. Alright, so we're one-shotting enemies pretty easily. Good, I wanted to take him on because I was afraid he'd sneak up on me anyway. Alright, we're almost to the next area of the Stonehenge base, but I want to come up here real quick and grab this cup of life noodles. Because we've already used two here. Alright, I believe after we go through this path right here, we'll be in the next area. Wow, that was quick. Oh, we're pretty strong to be taking out a star man. It's odd. I surprise attacked him, but it looks like I, you know, took him head on because we were looking at his face. Anyway, we're in the next area. With a new enemy, this is the Starman Super, pretty much Starman's big brother, and he start and he he's very annoying. You want to take him out first in any battle because he has healing Omega and can revive fallen allies. So if you were to take this guy out first, even if he didn't, even if he wasn't something that exploded upon death, uh, this guy right here would just go ahead and revive him. He can also cast Psychic Shield, Psychic Shield Beta on different characters, so we'd have a hard time time using uh, psychic attacks on them. In fact, he starts out with a psychic shield beta, so uh, unless you want to use a neutralizer on him, it's best just to stick with regular attacks. But more importantly, the Starman Super has a 1 in 128 chance of dropping the elusive Sword of Kings, which is the only weapon in the game that Pooh can equip that will raise his defense. He can equip yo-yos and slingshots, however, they all look Lower his offense. The Sword of Kings will actually raise it. I will be going after the Sword of Kings just for the sake of having Pooh fully equipped, and I'll show you a fairly easy trick for getting it with little, with uh, minimal frustration and minimal time. Uh, so for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to take out the Starman Super simply because I highly doubt that I'm going to get a Sword of Kings on this one battle especially when uh since when the starman super is paired with another enemy uh the chances of getting the sword of kings actually decreases uh it becomes like for example right now he's with one more he's with he has one ally with him which means that <clears throat> sorry i'm choking on my own saliva there which means that uh the chances of him dropping the sword of kings is actually one in 256 so yeah it's likely that we're not going to get it all right so let's just go ahead and finish this guy off real quick come on poo mirror him ah you're useless whatever let's hurry up and take him out Ow, ow. All right, let's try to move on to the other side of this room right here. Holy shit. Guys, you are not going to believe this. From that fight, guess what I got? The fucking Sword of Kings. It's almost unfair. I thought I was going to have to show you guys the hard way of getting it, but I guess the gods smiled down on me this day. I... 
I, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. That has never happened, and anybody who watches this video is probably going to get extremely pissed off by the fact that I got the Sword of Kings so easily. Oh god, I'm gonna get rage. So much rage. Alright, I'm equipping this thing on Poo, and it's gonna raise his offense by 30. Other than that, let me, let me heal up real quick because I am going to show you guys a method for actually getting this thing that uh, doesn't involve, you know, the grace of God. So, uh, yeah, no explanation, no explanation whatsoever. I'm at a loss for words, and he was with uh, he was with another star man when that happened, and he even called another star man into battle. Okay, let's get over to this area right here, and in this present box, we get the broken harmonica, and uh, we can hand that over to Jeff, and he'll be able to fix that when his IQ is, I believe, 55. What is it right now? Okay, we're almost there. Anyway, here's what we want to do. We want to change Ness's weapon to the Casey Bat because its overall offense makes it easier for you to auto-win battles. We want to make sure that Jeff has at least one, sp one space in his inventory empty. Alright, and that's pretty much it. Now what we want to do is we want to kind of creep over and try to single out a Starman Super. Crap, come on, go away. We want to try to single out a Starman Super. Use the disappearing, reappearing enemy trick by going on and off screen if you need to. Uh, other than that, let's try to get a Starman Super going over here. Come on, get over here, because like I said, we want to get him alone so the uh, chances of getting, uh, getting the Sword of Kings doesn't decrease. Come on. All right, so here we are with another Starman Super. Uh, had we uh, gotten, uh, had we gotten a um, surprise attack on him, the fact that we have the Casey Bat actually um, would help us auto win. Now, uh, what you want to do is run, is uh, have everybody defend, and then you want to have Jeff spy. Now. If Jeff spies on him and he has the uh, Sword of Kings, you want a space invent. You want to. You want a space open in Jeff's inventory so he can actually take the thing. Other than, otherwise, you're not going to get it, and it's going to be a complete waste of time. So if he doesn't have it, like this one didn't, obvious for obvious reasons, you want to run away. You do not want to finish the battle. The reason for this is because one of the biggest risks of hunting for the Sword of Kings is becoming over-leveled. Uh, and that can be a bad thing. You do not want to max out your levels, especially with Ness, because towards the end of the game, he gets a huge, huge stat bonus uh, from leveling up. And if he's already at his max level, he won't get that. You'll miss out on it, and it can actually make the end game you know, a little more frustrating because Ness isn't going to get that big boost. But, you know... Uh, so there you have it right there. Uh, that's how you get the Sword of Kings. If you have any questions, uh, leave a question in the comment section or leave me a question on Twitter or Facebook and I'll help you out to the best of my ability. They also have uh, a f the same tip that I gave you in uh, better detail over on uh, Starman.net on their official site walkthrough for this game. But... I already did all of that. I was uh, intending to cut this episode apart, but it looks like, uh, due to my own surprise of getting the Sword of King so easily, I, uh, you know, extended the episode just so I could um, uh, explain how to actually do it the normal way without getting extremely lucky like I did. So, with Sword of Kings in hand, we're ready to take on the rest of the Stonehenge base, but that's going to have to wait until next time. And until next time, Thank you for watching that LP show, and have a one that is good.